had to face an unusual enemy when I met the menace from outer space. The world waited impatiently for the launching of the first squadron of pilotless spacecraft ever to attempt a landing on the planet Mars. Inside Metropolitan Spacecraft Headquarters, the clock ticked off the time. 24 hours until launch time. Just one day away from an historic flight. Inside the Space Center Tower... Finally, the maiden voyage of our space rockets. Can you imagine? It will certainly be a great day for Metropolitan City and for you, sir. Everyone knows how hard you've worked as director of the spacecraft headquarters to put our rockets on Mars. Why, it could mean that our spacecraft, manned with electronic recording equipment, could uncover the vast wonders of the universe. Hmm. Yes, it could mean a wonderful thing for the entire world, couldn't it? One more day and we'll see. Look there, sir. Over the rocket bay. What in the world could that be? Flying saucer headed for the rocket. My rocket. It's destroyed them. And now it looks like it's coming back over the base, sir. Listen to me, Earthlings. Do not attempt to explore space. You will not succeed. Wow, it talked. You have ruined all the rockets, whatever you are, and now we cannot succeed. All that work for nothing. This station has just learned that the rockets set for launch tomorrow have been destroyed by a spacecraft containing creatures from Mars. What? Martians in Metropolitan City? This word just in. The Martians have landed. Oh, I should have retired. I just don't think I can cope with Martians. Yes, what is it? The Martians are in the city. What? Where? Over the TV tower. <laughs> done they'll destroy my city all these buildings in rubble in no time at all oh i'm glad you're here it looks extremely bad chief fumble thumbs all my rockets were destroyed by those martians and now they attack the city apparently they think our exploration of their planet meant to do them harm they plan to destroy us first with little hope of stopping the giant creatures from outer space all of the artillery was called out for action, but it was a futile attempt. Now you see, we must give up. The Martians will destroy us. We don't have a chance. You see that, don't you? What exactly is the situation, Chief Bumblethumbs? The director of the Space Center told me the Martians think we're trying to destroy them, so they're going to destroy us first. And you want me to take care of them, is that right? I certainly do, Eighth Man. You're my only hope now. If anyone can get rid of those things, you can. I'll do my best, of course, Chief. The only thing I can tell you is that the saucers they came in were able to cut through the steel TV tower as if it were made of butter. Right this minute, they're out there somewhere, destroying everything in their path. That's all I can tell you. Please, get them, Eighth Man. Right. Here's a TV tower. Now, let's see if I can find any clues to the strength of those Martians. These particles may be just what I'm looking for. I'll have to have this dust examined thoroughly by an expert, like Dr. Mentor. Well, Doctor, what does it look like? I can tell you this much right now. There are two distinct types of metals here, and one of them I find most unusual. One of them must be the steel from the TV tower. Exactly, that is precisely where it comes from. But the other, all I can tell is that it has a melting point of over 12,000 degrees. 
We have no substance of that strength, Dr. Mentor. That is exactly right, Tobor. You see, I am certain this substance is from outer space for that very reason. I know of no metal on Earth, even the diamond, which is as strong. Doctor, that metal there, what is it? I don't think I've ever seen anything like it before. Oh, that. It's a, uh, well, a kind of steel I invented, uh, called supercarbonic steel. Supercarbonic steel? Yeah, well, I'm sorry, that's all I can tell you about your metal, but I must get back to my work, you know. Yes, of course. Thank you, Dr. Mentor. I wonder why Dr. Mentor got so upset when I asked about that steel he invented. Very strange. What's that? No, sir. I'm great, man. I'll use my electrical current. Oh, good. Electricity doesn't work. to lose that saucer until I can find a means to overpower its energy source. Its fantastic speed is keeping it right behind me. Phew, it's gone. Dr. Metter was right about the power of that metallic substance. No earth metal could withstand the heat of my electric current and the supersonic speeds it takes to follow me. That ship must have some sort of a tracking device, which was interrupted when I dove into the sea. Now I know, of course. What is it, Eighth Man? What's this all about? Just watch, Chief Humble Thumbs, and I'll show you what I mean. I recorded pictures of the saucer in my memory cells. It's definitely a robot craft. Watch. I'll slow down the action. See those sharp appendages all around? Just like a giant saw. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what it is, Chief. If it's a robot flying saucer, then who's giving the orders? Chief, that's what I intend to uncover. You mean you don't know? I don't know yet, but I have a hunch they're not Martians. They're not Martians, Eighth Man. That's right, Chief. I can't tell you any more right now, but I'll know soon. Oh, that's wonderful, Eighth Man. But what about those monsters that are loose in the city? I wish I knew. Strata, a friend and associate of Dr. Mentor, the metallurgist I had visited earlier. I went hoping to get another opinion on that strange metal. Ah, uh, here it is. The report that you wanted on that strange metal. Did you find out what it is? I certainly did. It's supercarbonic steel. There's no doubt about it. It's about the hardest substance I've ever run across. Harder than a diamond. Its melting point is over 12,000 degrees. Dr. Mentor invented it. Then Dr. Mentor was lying. I had heard him talk about it several times, but I never had a chance to see the metal up close. Carbonic steel. Now I think the pieces are beginning to fit into place. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt our regular schedule to show you these scenes from the Metropolitan Spacecraft Headquarters. As you can see, new rockets have been constructed for the space mission, which was interrupted last week. The new rockets are protected, as you see, by these anti-missile missiles. Oh no, that sound! The flying saucers are back again! Ready with the missiles? Fire! goes the doctor. I'd better follow him. What's that? Someone's following me. I don't know who he is, but I'll take care of him. All right, if you're so curious, just keep coming. I'll take care of this meddling fool. Where's in that door? It's opening. I'll have to use my eye beams to find my way in here. Now, where did he go? Oh! Uh-oh. Looks like I'm trapped. 
<laughs> yes, you are trapped. And it is impossible for you to get out. Mentor, you should know you can't keep me prisoner. On the contrary, your strength will do you no good now. We'll see. I told you, Eighth Man. Now, what are you doing here? I came to find out why you used your super carbonic steel to build those flying saucers, Mentor. Oh, so you do know about my super carbonic steel. Well, I'll tell you, since it will do you no good here. My metal excels all others in strength and durability. Since there is no match for it, there is no defense from it. And I can use my steel to control the entire world. My flying saucers, as you call them, were to panic the world into believing the planet Mars was attacking. Dr. Mentor, I'll see to it that you never get away with this. You cannot succeed. <laughs> you don't really think you can stop me, do you, Ape Man? You are a prisoner. What can you do from here? I'll manage to get out of here somehow. <laughs> I doubt it, Ape Man. Look up there. That pendulum is made of a razor-sharp wheel of supercarbonic steel. Watch it, Ape Man. See how it swings closer and closer? Still think you'll escape me? <laughs> Such a lovely day. I wish I knew where Mr. Tobor went. Oh, a flying saucer. Oh. Oh. People of the Earth, surrender in 24 hours or we will destroy you. Oh, oh no. Please. My steel body is no match for that super carbonic steel. I'll be torn to pieces by that wheel. There's got to be some way out, if I could only think. Wait a minute. The power line. Now, if I can just break it. There. Now, to disconnect the wheel. Use my electric energy to power it and drill my way out. There. Dr. Mentor is gone. I'd better hurry. What am I going to do if only Eighth Man were here? Are they Martians or aren't they Martians? You are here, Eighth Man. I mean, Tobor. Yes, and I think you'd better tell me quickly what's going on here, Chief. It's those Martians or whatever they are. They demand our surrender within 24 hours. We just can't do that. We can surrender. But it looks like we have no choice. Our entire arsenal is useless against those flying saucer things. The man responsible for this is Dr. Mentor. Those ships aren't from outer space at all. Dr. Mentor devised this scheme to make all the world his possession. So you see, there never was an attack from Mars. Dr. Mentor was behind it all. But what do we do about Dr. Mentor? And how do we stop him from carrying out his plan? Here's my idea. The doctor is unaware that I know his true identity, Chief. Oh, that imposter. I'm sure we could approach his house without any difficulty at all. Here we are, Chief. Looks quiet. Try the bell. Looks like we'll have to break in, Chief. Odd-looking room. There doesn't seem to be anyone here. That door. I'd better try to open it. It's stuck. There. What? Why, that's Dr. Mentor, and it looks like he's been shot. From the looks of things, this room has been closed for several days. But how could that be, Eighth Man? Why, you said yourself the doctor was behind those saucers. I know, Chief, but it looks as though I was wrong. The real culprit must have killed the doctor and taken his place, and now we have to find him. What do we do now? We've got to work fast, Chief and find out who the imposter is before he carries out his plan to use those robot saucers to take over the world. That voice had said 24 hours. How much time have we got left, Chief? Let's see, just 14 hours. The melting point is 12,000 degrees. That means that... Wait a minute, the light burner gun. Yes? What about the light burner gun, Eighth Man? Super carbonic steel melts at just over 12,000 degrees. I see what you mean. The light burner gun generates enough heat to destroy those flying saucers. That's a great idea. We'll get the light burner gun. That ought to do it. Exactly, Chief. I'll go see Catherine Rational now. 
It's her invention. Right. Eight, man. Only hours before the city was to be destroyed, and my last hope was Dr. Catherine Rational, inventor of the light burner gun. Hello, and what may I do for you, sir? Hello, Catherine. Don't you remember me? No, I don't. Why, yes, Eighth Man. I'm glad you remembered me, because I have to ask a favor of you. I need your light burner gun desperately, Catherine, and there isn't a moment to wait. I heard about the flying saucers, Eighth Man, and I'm only too glad to help. But the gun hasn't been in use for some time, and its power is low. These are the mathematical formulas I must follow each time the gun is recharged. But it can't be done quickly. You see, it takes 10 hours for the light burner gun to be recharged, Eighth Man. There's very little time, but I'll go to the bank vault now. I got to the bank where the light burner gun was stored as quickly as I could. I was handed the gun and left, hoping its energy hadn't deteriorated, leaving it useless. It's got to work. What? It has no power at all. I hope there's time to recharge it before it's too late. The entire army is here, and I still feel helpless. Ah, the director of the space headquarters. Maybe he came to help. Tell me, sir, is there anything we can do? There is only one thing to do, Chief. Your guns cannot destroy those saucers. I'm sure you know that. It's wiser just to give up to their superior power. How can you say that, sir? Why, you're the director of the spacecraft headquarters. That is precisely what I mean. I have seen their advanced technology at work, Chief Fumblethumbs. Their intelligence in the field of astronomics is completely unbelievable. I don't care what their intelligence is. I tell you, we will not give up without a fight. Have it your own way, but I'm warning you, Chief Fumblethumbs. Soon, Eighth Man will be here. He says those spaceships aren't from Mars at all. He says they're robot saucers. Robot saucers? Ridiculous, Fumblethumbs. There is no such thing. They're Martians, do you hear? Martians! Oh, I'm mixed up. Consider my advice well, Chief Fumblethumbs. Give up. Oh, I wish I knew what to do. He says Martians. He says robots. Oh! The light burner gun is recharging. Is there time? I must get there soon. One more hour to go. I'm afraid we can't hurry. It's only 70% charged. The machine modules are at the breaking point now. Any further increase in power will melt the wire, and the gun will once again be rendered useless. I can't take that chance, but there's so little time left. There. The gun is now charged to capacity. Thank you. Now. Good luck to you, Eighth Man. Go quickly now. Right. are flying in a tight formation. If I could only discover where they're being controlled from and who is doing it. Saucers, this is your master. Proceed to saucer landing site 025 immediately. Proceed to saucer landing site 025 immediately. I'd better follow them. Going 
enjoy those trees. Hope I don't lose them. No, it's Ace Man. That's right. And this light burner gun will see to it that you don't get away with your scheme. It's the only weapon which can defeat you. There is your target, saucers. Destroy Ape Man! Oh, the light burner. Now oh, I'll get you. Dr. Mentor, he's getting... Now I'll get him. You didn't think you'd get away with this, did you? Doctor, the scheme of yours couldn't possibly... What's this? I can't believe it. The director of the Metropolitan Spacecraft Headquarters disguised as Dr. Mentor. Wait a minute. I'm beginning to see. You had your saucers destroy your space rockets for a reason. That's right. I thought if the people could see how powerful the steel was, they would give up. And I would rule the world. So you decided to steal the super carbonic steel formula from Dr. Mentor's laboratory and killed him doing it. You of all people should know that man will one day reach the stars. But he will get there through understanding, honest effort, and peaceful cooperation. The exploration of space certainly is exciting, isn't it, Chief? It sure is, but I think I'll stay home.